Two experts, two dear friends. This is like old home week. Douglas Holtz Eakin, <laughs> president of American Action Forum and former CBO director, and Kevin Hassett, former chair of the Council of Economic Advisors and author of the most important book of the 21st century, The Drift, Stopping America's Slide to Socialism. Gentlemen, both of you, welcome to the show. Dougie, it's good Thank to see you. you. Okay. Good to see you uh, there. Kevin, just start with you. You probably saw the chart. You and I have been emailing with uh, Casey Mulligan. And what is this man? Where's this manufacturing boom? We're in a manufacturing recession. Does he right. get that? Does his economic right, we, advisors we not tell him? Right. You know, we, we don't have a manufacturing boom right now. We're in a manufacturing recession. We're in a real wage recession. And the, you know, I think the, the word Bidenomics in the end is going to be probably used in the common vernacular, but it's not going to be used the way Joe Biden means. I think what Bidenomics is, is ignoring economics, doing foolish policies, and then lying about the data. That's what Bidenomics is. And the American people get it. And I guess Joe just figures if he keeps telling the lies over and over again, then eventually people will believe him. But I don't think so because they, you know, go to the gas station, go to the grocery store, look at their checkbooks, notice if you're a family of, uh, with two earners that make 100 grand a year, you're down $16,000 since Biden took office in terms of spending power. And so I don't think that any amount of sugarcoating it with fancy language is going to help the American people change their minds about him. Yeah, well, the polls show that. Uh, Lincoln was right. You can't fool all the people all the time. Doc Holt's taken. I want to ask you, you know, there's a new circular out where Biden is uh, jimmying the regulatory story. So now <laughs> cost benefit analysis. I mean, you know a lot more about this than I do. But basically, as I understand it, uh, Washington Times report, I think it was this morning or yesterday. Anyhow, instead of a, a hundred million dollars review, it's going up to 200 million. But also, oh, Doug, it's uh, they've changed somehow the cost benefit approach so that you will have essentially a lot more newer a lot newer regulations and nobody's going to keep track of it and we've already had devastating regulatory increases and I was hoping you'd talk to us about it because I think this has been one of the you know real daggers in the heart of the American economy yeah no question about it uh, you know we've been keeping track of the regulatory states since 2005 so we've got observations on Bush, Obama, Trump, and, and now Biden administrations. And this is the single most expensive regulatory uh, state we've ever seen. Uh, in his first year in office, uh, Biden imposed $200 billion of regulatory costs on uh, the American business uh, community. You know, if we had a $200 billion tax increase, I think everyone would know and, and think, gee, that's not a very good idea. The pace continues. Uh, he has the highest cost per regulation in any of those uh, uh, administrations. He has the most costs at this point in his, in his tenure. It is a, it's a tsunami. And those were the old rules. The rules you're talking about, which are going to come into effect, do two very important things. Number one, they raise the threshold for what's called a major regulation from $100 million of costs to $200 million of costs, meaning that those uh, in between will no longer get regulatory scrutiny like they would before. So we're just going to push those through without looking at them very carefully. Second thing is change the, the discount rate in the cost benefit analysis. The discount rate tells you oh. how much something happens in 10 or 20 mm -hmm. years counts today. And what they're going to do is, is they're going to lower those discount rates and thus make things that happen in 10, 20 years count more. Now, what's the essence of a Biden regulation? Enormous upfront costs. Can't change that. So let's go find some benefits that we're going to claim are going to happen in 10 or 20 years and add them on. Voila, passes a benefit cost test. Mm -hmm. So this just just uh, tilts the playing field toward doing more regulations. They didn't need any encouragement, but that's what we have. You know, Kevin has it listening to Doug. If you tax and spend and regulate and inflate, you're not going to have a healthy economy. But if we tally this up and I, again, I don't mean to be disrespectful personally, but on the policies, he has taxed, he has spent, he has regulated, and he has inflated. And he's out there selling something that nobody recognizes. He's out there selling a good economy that nobody recognizes. And Kevin, I think, I don't know whether he's just tone deaf, bad advisors, uh, the public's not buying it. Right. Well, you know, I think, though, if we if we really look at what's going on with Biden, right, it's kind of like he's a firefighter, 
you know, in a house with a blindfold on who's drunk and he's sort of spraying the hose around everywhere, hoping he hits some fire. But in the end, what he's doing just makes absolutely no sense. The fact is that if you think about it, there isn't an economic model in the world that says if you raise marginal tax rates, that growth goes up. There isn't an economic model in the world that says that the economy is going to boom if you become the fastest regulator in the history of America. There isn't an economic model in the world that says that you can spend six trillion trillion dollars and not expect some inflation unless the Fed really, really wallops against it. And so basically he's denying economics and the denial of economics is what he's calling Bidenomics. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, there's a form, an art form called Dada, where you basically just say nonsense or the art is just nonsense, like they put a toilet in, in a, in a uh, art museum. That's, that's really what's going on here is Bidenomics wait, is Dada. Wait a economics. second. Let's focus on that. Dada. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Kevin. Please explain yourself. This is modern art you're talking about? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah there, there's a, uh, a famous quote by one of the top Dada artists that, that life and my toothbrush are art. Uh, and, and, you know, basically Joe Biden's out there with a toothbrush waving it in the air saying, look at this glorious Bidenomics, but it's destroying the country and there's no common sense around it at all. He's just in denial of economics. And so the, the, the word nomics should not be associated with Biden in any way. You need my saintly wife's classical art picture, which you have at least one, if not more. <laughs> yeah. Doug Holt's taken, uh, I don't think the stock market would be selling off on, on jobs if it didn't fear that anything comes up as inflationary and the right. Fed's going to jack up rates. I mean, I see this, uh, I see it for what it is. The Fed is going to raise their target rates, uh, unless you disagree. I want to get your take on that. But normally, you know, you, you had this long period of 20 years, 25 years when inflation stayed low and people didn't panic over a decent jobs report. I mean, I don't know if the ADP is an accurate forecaster of tomorrow's jobs or not. I'm just saying jobs by themselves, if you have decent productivity, decent business investment are not inflationary. But people now fear everything because of a lack of confidence. Now, Doug, what, the Fed is going to raise rates a couple, several more times. Uh, we're probably going to go to 6%. Kevin Hass has been talking, could even go to 7%. What are you thinking about this, uh, Doug Holtzaken? I, I think that's exactly right. They're still behind the curve. If you look at like a Taylor rule or any other indicator of where they ought to be, they're, they're not quite there yet. You know, it, it's hard for the FOMC to come to terms with this and admit it, but they, it looks like they have. Mm. And so I expect a rate increase in July. I expect another one later in the year. Um, you know, the, the inflation is a reality, and if you look at any measure of core inflation, it's not coming down quickly, and the Fed has told people this. I mean, P Chairman Powell's been very clear that it's going to take years to, to get back to the 2% target, and I think a lot of people just don't want to hear it, so that's the reality. Now, it's the things that surround the inflation that are so troubling. Productivity is terrible right now. Productivity mm -hmm. growth has been horrible, and, mm -hmm. and that's a, a serious concern. And the business investment climate's not good. And the thing to remember for, I think, most people who, who don't do this for a living is there's only been one recession that got led down by the household sector. That was the pandemic. That's the exception. Every other post-war business cycle, it is business spending, largely fixed investment spending, that goes down first and the household sector follows a quarter or two later. So I'm still concerned about the underlying quality of this economy. You know, I'd like to say two more things about the framing of Bidenomics, Larry. I mean, this, this is a messaging exercise. I don't know what bottom-up, middle-out means either. But I do know this. When they say he inherited an economic catastrophe, that is not true. He inherited an economy that was growing at 6.3% mm -hmm. and had 1.4% inflation. That was great. And that is not what we have now. So um, the, they're trying to make their record look good by pretending the starting point was terrible. It just wasn't. Mm -hmm. you got to go look at the numbers. And I'm particularly irked as a former CBO director that he continues to assert that he cut the deficit by $1.7 trillion when the Washington Post, of all people, gave him a bottomless Pinocchio for this. It is absolutely untrue, and I find it troubling not just that he says it, but that this is a White House where it's okay to put in the State of the Union something that's manifestly untrue, get told it's manifestly untrue, and continue to say it on repeated occasions. Repeatedly. I, I don't never, think that speaks well. Doug, it doesn't he, say well. I mean, every, that really troubles me. Every speech he gives, he has that line in it. Yep. Every single speech he gives. So then I have to do an opening introduction riff and just say it's a bottomless <laughs> Pinocchio. I mean, it's almost yeah. like a ritual. Kevin has said last word. You know, Doug Holtzikin is right. When business goes down, 
that's really the leading indicator of a recession. And that's why I quote these business equipment spending numbers. That's the heart of investment and also the heart of productivity. That stuff's falling. The last three months has been falling. Right. And that, God, please, I want and, you to take us out. And that's where recessions come word. from. Yeah. Yeah, that's where recessions come from. And, and the data are so terrible that really the only thing we can do is, is grab some whiskey and, and drink and hope it makes us feel better. So it's a bottoms up economy. It's a bottoms up economy. So he, got a, he just missed the S. I'll have, a, I'll have a Diet Coke. Thank you very much, gentlemen. You're terrific. Look at the smiles. I love both of you smiling. Kevin Hassett, my dear friend. Doug Holtz, another very old and dear friend. Thank you both ever so much.